Hello friends and welcome back to the channel and if you're brand new here welcome hello my name is Sue and I love to talk about cozy and indie gaming as well as cozy lifestyle things and today I want to talk about a whole bunch of cozy games and apps that I love to use on my iPad almost every day. The first one on my list today is the lake coloring app and I know that technically this isn't a game but I am going to be discussing some apps and games today that have to do with my iPad. You can also use a lot of this stuff on mobile as well. So the first one is the lake coloring app I love to color okay I have like a drawer full of coloring books and I love to use like artist grade pencils like Prismacolor and things like that and sometimes I just don't want to drag all that stuff out I just want something that's easy and compact plus it is just kind of satisfying coloring on the iPad and I will also say that I do use the Apple pencil too but you do not need to use an Apple pencil to enjoy this app you definitely do not need that you can use a finger or any other type of stylus there are just so many things Things to do in this app I have used a lot of different coloring apps and this one is just by far the best one the other ones always seem to kind of be more geared towards children and this one is definitely more for adult coloring the other thing too is a lot of them you just kind of tap and it fills it in this one you can actually shade and blend and do all kinds of coloring techniques that you can use in real life so I'll read you the little snippet from their thing it says explore hand-drawn illustrations by independent artists and dive into a friendship of colors and brush strokes right on your trusty iPad or iPhone. Unleash your creativity, nurture your artistic side, and discover the incredible impact coloring can have on your overall well-being. And that is right from their app page. Like I said, it is a very good tool for me to help me with my anxiety and just kind of calm me down after a day's work. The other thing I like too is I can sit in the dark and use it because it is on my iPad. And you do not need to use an Apple Pencil. Like I said, you can use your finger or any other stylus to color. You also also can use a free version of this app. I'm not quite sure exactly what is included in the free one, but I'm pretty sure it just doesn't have full range of all of the different brushes, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't have all of the different art that you can choose from on the paid version. But I mean, you still have a lot to choose from as far as I'm concerned. If you do want to buy this or if you end up liking it, this one is $39.99 a year, which I know is steep, but I honestly think that it's worth it. So I would just try the free version, see what you you think and if you like it I would just fork out the $39.99 a year because you get access to so much and honestly the app is always being updated they're trying new things all the time they feature artists independent artists they're all real you can look at their little bios and things like that and tr just kind of learn a little bit about each of the artists the other thing too is that this is also kind of a gratitude journal type thing as well there is a feature in there where you can color things based on mood and you you can write like your feelings down. It's actually a really in-depth app. It is more than just coloring. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. The next one is the Jigsaw Puzzle app and I will link below the exact one that I use because there's a ton of them. So I used to make fun of my stepdad because he would always do jigsaw puzzles on his phone and I would just laugh like who does a puzzle on their phone? Like that's so freaking weird. But finally, when I got my iPad, I decided to try a jigsaw puzzle app and I get it now. I actually get it, okay? I'm a puzzle girly. During the pandemic, we did a whole bunch of puzzles and during the pandemic, it was actually okay because we could like do our puzzles and then we could just kind of leave them on the table and then come do them once in a while because we had like really nothing else going on. But in real life, puzzles just don't really work out that way. Like you need to, you know, have a dedicated space for them because if you don't finish them, then they're kind of like sitting out and if you have dogs you know they take pieces and then you have like pieces that are chewed up or missing and I don't know they're just not convenient just like with the coloring I don't want to drag all this stuff out okay I don't want to drag it out that is where these jigsaw puzzle apps come in another app that is just perfect for your well-being and just practicing like being in the moment like mindfulness and there are different settings that you can use on my specific jigsaw puzzle app you can either set it so all the pieces are faced the way that they should be. There's no rotating involved and you just kind of move them onto the board or you can make it where you actually do need to rotate and figure out which way they need to be facing to fit together. You can do either way. Also, you can choose anything from like 50 pieces all the way up to like 300 pieces with each puzzle. It's got a lot of like customization for like whatever you're in the mood for. You'll earn coins, which will make you be able to open up more jigsaw puzzles and so on and so on. I paid like four or five dollars. I'll 
I'll put it below like how much I actually paid just so I didn't have to have ads anymore. The ads never came in while I was doing the Jigsaw Puzzle app. They always came when it would be in between puzzles. So it's not like you're going to be interrupted by ads. It's definitely not intrusive like that. It's more like you finish a puzzle and then it will have an ad before it gives you the next puzzle. So I paid a couple dollars just to get rid of the ads because it was just kind of annoying and it was worth the couple bucks to me. I absolutely love the Jigsaw Puzzle app. It is just so nice to sit down at night and watch some YouTube videos and do my little Jigsaw Puzzle and just kind of relax, you know? My mind likes to stay a little bit busy. It likes to think a little bit so that I don't start thinking about all of the pretend dangers that my brain loves to just make up and make me worry about. So 10 out of 10, highly recommend the Jigsaw Puzzle app. My stepdad actually did them on his phone. I do them on the iPad. So you can definitely do these on the phone as well. The next one on my list is one that I actually talked about in a video a couple videos ago. It is called the Flow Free app. I talked about how I use it for my anxiety and things like that. And so many people commented and said that they also love Flow Free and also use it for anxiety and it helps them calm down. This is like my go-to app for when I'm kind of like waiting somewhere, like let's just say at the airport or like waiting for an appointment, I'll play this. It's also my go-to app when I am in the middle of a panic attack. I will actually bring Flow Free out and for some reason it kind of just grounds me. It's become almost like a comfort game. It is so much fun and it's easy and it gets more challenging as you go. You basically have to connect certain colors of dots together with a colored line that is the same exact color and you can't cross the line. So you have to figure out how to connect these dots while using every square available to you on the board and also not crossing any lines. It starts off easy, gets more challenging as you go. It is just a game that is just such a good time waster, such a good way to just ground yourself. Definitely a way to practice mindfulness and be a little bit meditative or just something to do to occupy your mind. 10 out of 10, highly recommend Flow Free. I think there is also a paid version of it. I have myself have never paid a cent to actually use this one. So definitely not one that you have to put any money in whatsoever, but you can use this one on mobile and on iPad. I've used it on both. I just use my finger when I'm on mobile. When I'm on the iPad, I do use my Apple Pencil, but you can definitely use your finger on there as well. The next one that I want to talk about is Plague Inc. And this might be a game that you have heard of before. And I guess it's debatable if this one is cozy or not. I guess the premise of this one is probably not traditionally cozy, but it is still kind of a cozy game. So the premise of this one is that you are inventing a disease and and that disease has to wipe out the entire human race. And when that happens, you win. And every time you wipe out the human race, you will open up another type of disease. So it starts with bacteria. Once you move on from bacteria, it goes to virus and then it goes to fungus and then it goes to prions. And so you invent these diseases and you actually set the symptoms, the modes of transmission, all of the things so that you can wipe out the human race. There is a a little bit of strategy to this game and you don't have to play it in one session. You can come back to it here and there. And the game is just so much fun. It has a lot of detail. So what happens is, is let's just say that you made your disease and it's a bacteria. You will pick the origin spot where patient zero is. My strategy is always to put patient zero in Greenland because I always feel like Greenland is like the hardest country to infect. So when I start it there, I feel like the hard part is already done. And then what you will do is you will gain these points by popping little bubbles. Every time this disease spreads to somebody else, you'll pop a bu bubble and you'll get like these DNA points. And then you can use that to mutate the virus so that it is resistant to antibiotics, so that it's resistant to cold, it's resistant to heat, so that it is easily transmitted between people like coughing and sneezing and breathing like airborne. You can make it, birds can spread it. You can make it so that mosquitoes spread it. You can make it so that it spread through water. And it's just so much is at your fingertips that you can do. And once your disease is spreading nonstop, you want to start evolving the symptoms because you want these people to stay alive long enough that they infect somebody else, but then you also want to have them pass away. And it is a difficult little balance because 
if it kills people too quickly, it won't spread and the disease will go away on its own. But if you keep them alive long enough, they will find a cure for it and they will eradicate the disease. So it is a very little fine balance that you need to keep. So yes, the game's premise is definitely not cozy and maybe a little bit too close to home for some people with the events that we have recently gone through. But I will tell you that this game is a great time waster, a super fun game to play. And you know what? I'm, I'm just going to say it. It's definitely a relaxing game despite the premise of the game. Let's just put it that way. So Plague Inc. is 99 cents. I do think there is a free version too where there's probably just some ads. So this game is highly worth it because for a mobile game, this has a lot of depth. I think you can also play it on Steam if you wanted to. I usually play it on my iPad or my phone. And the next game that I want to talk about today is one that I have talked about so much recently. It is Fallout Shelter. I don't know what it is, but I have talked about this game so much recently, but it just fits so well in all my videos. Fallout Shelter is another mobile game that has so much depth that you can't even believe it. It has been out for many, many years, and I used to actually be addicted to it a long time ago, and so was my dad. And then I stopped playing it, but then when I got my iPad, I decided to start playing it again, and I am fully and completely addicted to it once again. Fallout Shelter is a game where you literally manage a Fallout shelter long after the bombs have gone on and you are literally in charge of making new humans, power plant, water, food, making weapons, going out and exploring the wasteland and finding resources to bring home. You also need to fight off people who come in and actually try to take over your fallout shelter. You also need to protect yourself against radioactive cockroaches and things like that. The game has a lot of depth and it is honestly I can't believe that it's a mobile game. So you will continuously build onto your shelter. More people will move in. You will have babies. You'll even be in charge of the education of all of the babies that you have. And you can do things like educate them in things that you need. So if you need more people working in the power plant, then you can have the kids, you know, learn stuff about that. And then they will work in the power plant someday. There's also a lot of like free things that you can collect, whether you do it by going out in the world and finding things. So you will find different outfits and weapons and all kinds of collectibles, even pets and things like that. And you can always check your progress and see like how many more things that you need to find. You also will have a daily thing where you can watch an ad and you watch the ad and when you're done, you get a free gift. And those free gifts can range from bottle caps to like lunchbox things where you can get all kinds of different materials and even people, people who are really good at a certain thing, like maybe they have a really high intelligence or something like that. And then once they kind of arrive in your shelter, you can put them to work accordingly wherever you need people or according to their, you know, thing that they're good at, whether it's intelligence or charisma, all that kind of stuff. I'll just kind of read you the little steam thing here. It says, Fallout Shelter puts you in control of the state-of-the-art underground vault from Vault Tech. Build the perfect vault, keep your dwellers happy, and protect them from the dangers of the wasteland. It's free to play. You basically just need to watch ads to get free things and it's completely optional. I usually will just play the ad and then go back to watching whatever YouTube video I'm watching until it heads back to like my game again. They're not intrusive at all. And like I said, you control it. If you don't want to watch ads, you never have to watch an ad as long as you live. I have never not once spent any money in this game and I have still built up enough currency to buy things, enough resources to build things. I have never needed to spend a dime in this game. However, you can get a lot of cool stuff if you decide to buy some things. And I think the stuff starts at like 99 cents and goes up to like 9.99, but it's completely free to play and you do not need to spend a dime. And 10 out of 10, highly recommend this game. The next game on my list is a game that I have only started playing since getting my iPad. It's not a game that I used to play at all like before on my phone. It's called Scavenger Hunt and it's kind of like a Where's Waldo type thing. You will get like an animated scene and it will tell you all of the different things that you need to find. Once you find those things, it will check it off below so that you can keep track. And then every time that you find everything, you move on to the next one. This is just kind of a fun little time waster. Definitely good for anxiety and mindfulness. Another game that I love to play while I put on some TV or YouTube videos. I actually found this game because I wanted to see if Where's Waldo was something that I could like actually play on my iPad. And this was the game that popped up. It is definitely taking all of its inspiration 
inspiration from Where's Waldo. You can completely see this while playing the game. I'll just read you their little thing. The scavenger hunt game is a level up to the hidden objects game genre. Our maps are alive. You can see kids playing in the park, athletes working out, grannies blocking cars in a parking jam, all with the common purpose to distract you from the scavenger hunt. That is such a perfect way to describe it because it is literally like watching a Where's Waldo if it was animated and everything in this little map is alive. So it's definitely setting itself apart from other scavenger hunt type games because it is animated. And that is something that is not normal with those. I mean, usually they're books and things like that. So the next game on my list is definitely a game that I have never seen anybody talk about before. It's called Plane Control. And this is a game that I found on my iPad like so long ago. And I kind of forgot about it until I got my new iPad. And I was like, I wonder if this game is still a thing. It's called Plane Control. And basically you play as an air traffic controller and you have to like land planes. There's obstacles like mountains in your way. And there's different speed aircraft like the space shuttle and blimps and small planes and big planes. So you're always, you need like four sets of eyes so that you can be keeping an eye on everywhere. And you basically just draw a line to land, draw a line to land. Sounds easy, right? Well, when you're over here trying to prevent two planes from crashing, there might be a blimp over here ready to crash into a mountain. It's not as easy as it sounds. It's quite challenging and I have so much fun playing it. It gets so chaotic sometimes and you're just like, oh my God, there's just planes and blimps and space shuttles coming from every which way. And it moves you on like to new levels where there'll be like mountains in the way and you're like, oh my God, is this, this game isn't hard enough. Let me just read you their little snippet. It says, guide your planes to ensure safe landing in this incredibly easy to learn yet surprisingly addictive game. Get an adrenaline rush while avoiding dangerous collisions, blazing storms and tornadoes, put out a forest fire, get ready to repel and attack enemy fighters and fight off an alien invasion. Let me tell you that that thing that I just read is blowing my mind because I thought that I've seen everything there is to see in this game. I have never seen a forest fire. I've never seen an alien invasion. So that's really interesting. There's actually a lot more to this game than I thought that there was because I can tell you that I've never dealt with either of those things. I've still had a ton of fun with this game. It's definitely not one that I can play for too long because I start to get a little bit frustrated and I'm like, okay, maybe it's time to open up Lake and start coloring for a little bit. <laughs> But now this description has me so intrigued with the forest fires and the alien invasions that now I'm like, I gotta play this game more. This one is free to play and it's on Android, Apple, and Google Play. The last game that I want to talk about today is a game that I wanted to know if it was still a thing because it was kind of part of my childhood, sort of like the Where's Waldo. I wanted to know if the game Lemmings was still a thing. I used to play Lemmings like nonstop on my dad's computer when I was young back in the 90s and it was a Commodore 64 so that's how old I am. Some of you probably don't even know what a Commodore 64 is but I typed in Lemmings in the app store and let me tell you that Lemmings very much is still a thing. Let me read you the little excerpt from the thing so that you can understand what Lemmings is actually about because some of you probably don't really know this game. Lemmings is a classic puzzle strategy game for those who love to play survival games. There are thousands of levels available to enjoy and endless lemmings fun. Lemmings are crazy. They run through the lasers independently and you have to save your lemmings by directing them in the right direction. You have to keep the lemmings safe and away from traps and obstacles to solve puzzles. You actually have to help the cute lemmings in their death survival mission. So basically you get a board and your lemmings just kind of start dropping out of the sky and you have a bunch of tools at your disposal that you use to get the lemmings to their home. It is very much like a Mario versus Donkey Kong situation situation, but it was well before Mario versus Donkey Kong became a thing. This is a game that I absolutely loved when I was a kid, and I am re-falling in love with this game again on my iPad. This game is free to play on Apple, Android, and Google Play. Well, we've made it to the end of another one of my videos today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button because it's free and it helps me out. Thank you so much to all of my members that should be on screen now. My verbal shout outs to Nurse Chrissy and Little Luxon. Thank you guys so much for being a BFF of mine and I will see you guys in the next one.